Yes, brother. Allah has given you the Quran as the basis of guiding you. Yes, sir. Now, this is the type of a sick person. See, when you want to talk about the Quran, you say, what is this? He said, this is the revelation of God. See, well, who, 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 who received it? We say, Muhammad. Ah, he has so many wives. You know, he spread his religion at the point of the sword. The Quran was published from the Jews and the Christians. Now, that is the perverted transgressor. Leave the Quran one side. Put it on the shelf. Don't bring it into the battlefield. Use his own book, the Bible. And Allah is telling you, Kul hatu bul hatu. Whenever he makes a claim, whatever claims he makes, Allah says, Kul haku burha. He says, so produce your proof, your evidence. In kuntum sadiqin. And once he produces it, use my book. My books will teach you what to do with the fellow, with his Bible. Inshallah. Yes, brother. Next to the I'm sorry. Christian has this thing of Jesus Christ uh, being on the cross as a pilot. I noticed how a lot of Muslims all over the world look up to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They kind of look in front of Muhammad more up than they look to the demon as far as you know Prophet Muhammad's birthday. Whereas now instead of having Jesus Christ, you see that he's shifting towards uh, Muhammad as being an Arab, more so as being a righteous prophet of Allah. And uh, I want to speak on the right or wrong of that because it seems like he's trying to equate since Christians lift up Jesus Christ as being a God, a child of God, the Muslims seem like you're picking up Muhammad instead of picking up what Allah says, instead of picking up the Quran. And uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't see like, you know, if I speak on, like, to uh, what you talk about Muhammad, right? right. right. But, uh, what about the revelation of what Allah gave to talk about Muhammad? Right. 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 Now, what do we do, you see, when we celebrate his birthday? We are reminding ourselves about his life. How he sacrificed everything for this kalamullah, for Allah's kalam. He had to flee for his life. Now if these things are not an inspiration for us, that look, this man of God, he is no God. He is not the son of God. He is only a messenger. He is telling you so. He is made to say that again and again. Say, Qul, tell them, Inna ma'na basharun mithlukum. Say, I am a man like yourself. You high ilayya, but the revelation of God has come to me. Inna Allah ilahu wahid, that your Allah is one Allah. This is it. Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah. Tell them that if they love Allah, fattabihuni. He says, follow me. Yuhbibkum Allah. Then Allah will love you. Wa yaghfir lakum zunubakum. And he'll forgive you your sins. Right? So if you love Allah, you have to love the Prophet. If you can't love the one you can see, how can you love the one you can't see? So this man, he sacrifices all. We're reminding ourselves about his life, that we may also emulate his life. And that's what Allah is telling us. He said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةً حَسَنًا He said, most certainly in the Apostle of Allah, you have the best example. So we are not substituting Muhammad for Jesus. He said, look, you're worshipping Jesus, now we're going to worship Muhammad. Astaghfirullah. No Muslim does that. If somebody does, we have to rectify it. But I can't imagine a Muslim worshipping the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Five times a day the Muazzin is telling you, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Said, I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. He is not God. He is not his son. Don't make a mistake like the others have done. They made the prophets into gods. They made the heroes into gods. Don't you do that. And that message has gone home. No Muslim worships Muhammad. Even the most lunatic of us. We have lunatics too, you know that. <laughs> we have types and types of lunacies we have. Among us, among us here, this group. Allah, if everybody had a chance to get at me, I will find the lunacies. But Alhamdulillah, I think after this, they'll be taking me away. Yes, sir. Can you give a book for the Holy Quran in the hands of a lot of people like you? I gave one just the English. English, the English. Right, right. Can you give the book into a a copy hand to read it because he wants it. Right. See, the answer is yes. But our brethren, the more learned of us, they say, La yamasuhu illal mutahroom. So none shall touch it except those that are pure. Accept it. You and I, when you are in a condition of janabat, you know, impurity, ceremonial impurity, you and I have no right to touch the Quran because we are bound by a constitution. 
That constitution tells us that we must be under certain conditions before you touch it. What about the non-Muslim? So he said, now they are not bound by our constitution. The moment they read the kalima, they'll also be bound. Until then, they are free. The man shows sincerity, that is his, his purity. He wants to know. He says, I want to see your book. You can't say, no, no, no. no. He said, man comes to a shop, you want to buy a car? He said, look, you buy, if you want to know about the car, you buy the car first. You will buy a car or any, any, anything? He said, look, you buy it first and then you find out. No, no, no. He said, I want to know what you're selling. Now, these brothers of ours, mostly from Pakistan and India, they are talking like that. So I said, ask them the question. You see, there are six million cops in Egypt. What translation will you give them? Ask them. What translation? Chinese? Zulu? What are you going to give them? The Arabic Quran, the Lebanese Christian, what, what translation will you give them? Tell me, ask them, what translation? Our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know he wrote those letters to the Emperor of Persia, the Emperor of Constantinople, the King of Egypt, the King of Yemen and the Nagas of Abyssinia. Five letters he sent out before his demise. Five letters were sent out. And each and every letter began, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The first verse of the Quran. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most gracious. And right in the middle of the letter to Heraclius, the Emperor Constantinople, there's another verse of the Quran. I saw it with my own eyes in the top copy museum in Istanbul. It says, Khul, say, Ya Ahlul Kitab, O people of the book, Ta'ala, come, ila kalimatin sawaim, baynana wa baynakum, that become the common terms as, as between us and you. Allah na buda illallah, that we worship not but Allah, wala no shirika bihi shay'an, and that we associate no partners with him, wala yattakhida ba'dun abadun arbaadun indun illah, and that we do not take from among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. Fa'in tawallaw, fa'kulu shadu bianna muslimun, but if they turn back, tell them that we are Muslims. We have submitted our wills to the will of God. Two verses in one letter, and when the messenger went, one horse, one ashab, Sahaba, and one scroll. He was not told that when you go and give this letter, ask the fellow that whether, you know, he made ghusl, to go and tell him to make wudu and come. No. He said, give it with all due respect. 